is SportBikeTracker.com, and today we're going to completely disassemble the Schubert C3 modular helmet and give you a high level look from the inside out. A lot of technology, a lot of passion and design engineering has went into this, and it's cool to have the opportunity to see it from the other side of the ropes, right? Instead of just looking from the outside in. If you want to hear about the features and the benefits of this helmet, please watch part one. We decided to separate this because there's so much information it just wouldn't fit in one video. Please watch part one of our Schubert C3 modular helmet. Remember, this helmet is available in the men's version and in the C3W, which was intended just for the ladies. And there are some nuances, some differences between the two that make this real appropriate for the ladies because it addresses the fact they have a different shape to their face. So it's gonna give them a better overall fit. Let's start off with removing the outer shield. Raise it all the way to the upward position. There is a trigger release on both sides. Push that forward, grab the helmet shield, pull back like so. Reinstallation is very simple. You can see these two channels right here, and there's these two tabs on the helmet shield. Another great way to do this is kind of remember how you have the shield oriented. It's kind of almost standing straight up and down. Okay, jumps right in there, just like that. It's that simple. We're gonna take it back off and let's have a look at removing the inner tinted shield. Remember, each one of these also comes with a fog-free pin lock insert. So if you're gonna ride in some really inclement conditions, you're able to install that in the outer shield. Inner drop-down screen. This is another Schubert innovation. Let's look at the cutout real quick too. And what I'd like to point out is the cable drive mechanism. What they're doing here, instead of just using a couple of flimsy little pieces of plastic and only driving it from one side and the other side being just a follower, they have the cable drive attached to both sides of the drop down inner screen. At the end of the day, it's gonna last longer and work smoother, just a higher level of design and quality. To remove the inner screen, if in fact you ever need to do so, what you have to do is just simply go ahead and get your fingernail in between the outer release and the inner shield and just pull away just a little bit and it comes right off like so. Come to the other side and repeat. Let's go ahead and open it up and expose the interior. The neck roll on this helmet is removable, replaceable. The cheek pads are removable, replaceable, as well as the top pad itself. The neck roll is gonna be specifically important to pay attention to because there's a really trick communicator system. It's a cooperative deal between Schubert and Cardo that is available for this helmet, okay? And if in fact you decide to grab one of those, at some point you're gonna to have to service it or install it. It's really easy to do. So pay attention to these quick couple steps. To release the neck roll, first I want you to disengage the snap here. Come to the other side, it's a mirror image. Then go ahead and grab firmly here onto the neck roll and pull inward and release this leading portion of the neck roll. There's basically a piece of spring steel in here and that slides into a little hole right here. So I kind of pull in and back and release that. Rotate around, pull backwards, and here is your neck roll. Comes right out. Cheek pads, easy enough to do. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do here, if you remove the cheek pads, which you, you, don't have to, you don't have to do this, to put your communicator system in, you do not have to disengage the actual roll off straps from the cheek pad. If you're just gonna install a communicator system, what you can do is simply reach in here and undo the snaps for the cheek pad, and that will expose this area right here, the cutout in the EPS, that's gonna allow you to access that so you, you don't have to release the roll off straps, which is important because these things can be a little bit tricky. To release the roll off strap, okay, what I want you to do is we first need to kind of fish in here and pull it out. And there it is, you can have a look at it right now. You see that, Josh? We're gonna slide 
the helmet chin strap through the roll off strap. We're then going to grab the roll off strap and pull backward. You can see it runs in a channel here on the cheek pad. Now I'm going to release the final snap. And then we're going to take and pull the helmet chin strap through the pocket in the cheek pad. Reinstallation of this can be a little bit tricky, and I'm just going to show you just a, a quick little tip. Basically, take a screwdriver, something kind of a blunt end to it. You want a little bit of length because essentially this roll off strap needs to slide all the way in this channel and come out over here. While we're on the subject of the roll off strap, what they're doing is they're riveting this strap to the back of the helmet. You can see the rivet right there. It runs through the cheek pad, it actually slides around the chin strap for the helmet. This helps to prevent helmet roll off in an impact, and it also, because it runs through this channel, when you tighten up your chin strap, it tightens the helmet in that area. It works to calm the wind, give a good seal, keep it nice and quiet. Now to put this back together, what I did here is I'm just going to kind of hold a screwdriver against the inside end of that loop, right? I'm going to go ahead and push in through this channel like so, all the way to the inside here, and you'll be able to reach in there, and boom, just like that. Okay, mirror image on the other cheek pad, and remember that little trick I showed you because that is going to make it a whole lot easier to get this thing back together. You're never going to be able to stuff that through there with your finger because this opening is rather small, so just keep that in mind. We're going to go ahead and undo the three snaps in place. We also need to get in there and fish out, just like we did on the other side, fish out that roll-off strap like so. Can you hear the forklift in the background? It's probably another shipment of Schubert's coming in. Go ahead and slide that through like so. This slide is a little bit trickier because you have to deal with the whole quick release, okay? Just like that, off it comes, out the back it goes, slide this through the pocket, and there are your cheek pads. We spoke in the first video about their mobility program, which essentially, it's kind of a crash damage deal, right? If in the first three years of ownership, if you properly registered this helmet, which is really the key to that, if you properly registered this helmet using the identification on this tag right here, the identification number, each one of the Schubert's helmets has that. You register it if in the first three years of ownership, you've had an accident and you obtain a police report, you're able to buy a replacement helmet at one third the original cost. That's a huge savings and that's a great program because remember these helmets are a pretty significant investment. So bear that in mind, register your helmet when you get it. Top pad. The top pad is essentially held in partially by the cheek pad snaps here, right? There is another snap here at the very back, and then we're going to come up to the front. There's a little Velcro, and then we're going to go ahead and release this from the channel in the front here at the brow area. Here is where I want to show basically the winter ventilation tuning flap right here. It is key in warm weather that this flap is located between the brow and the EPS. If it's back like this, it's essentially going to block the two main intake vents and it's going to dramatically reduce the performance of the ventilation system. Super key that you remember that. There's your top pad. Now here's something that you definitely don't see every time you disassemble a helmet. I'd like you to have a look at that EPS. There is actually flocking on the EPS. The reason that they've done that is it helps to dramatically reduce production of noise when the air is flowing in through the EPS and through these channels in here that provide the ventilation. And that's further proof of how far Schubert takes this to give you the best possible product. I think this is a pretty good look from the inside out. I'm sure along the way we've missed something. Maybe you missed a little something in part one, maybe a little something in part two. If you have any questions, never hesitate to contact us. We're happy to answer them. I'll answer them for you personally if you like. You can contact us at orders at sportbiketrackgear.com or we just toll free over the telephone at 
784-4327. I'm Brian Van from sportbiketrackgear.com. This is the Schuber C3 flip-up helmet.